I have started. Okay, well, welcome everyone to the weekly meeting to, for, for Grimoire Lab. So today we were discussing about having some uh, open uh, yeah, discussion. Let me use this word again for uh, 2020 in terms of community goals and so on. Um, so as a brief summary, I would say, so we started the working group like in October, might be. Um, and since then, we've been mainly focusing on, uh, well, teaching newcomers how the community works in mm -hmm. terms of, well, the product, the several pieces of software and so on. And then during the last three weeks before Christmas, we, we focused our efforts in producing a new dashboard focused on the weekdays and hours of the day activity for each of the developers. And the very last day we got stacked, well, specifically Georg got stacked into, uh, in the, in how to import and export panels and so on. Yep. So perhaps we, we can have this open discussion for, for 2020 in terms of, of community, what we would like to see in this, in this working group. Mm -hmm. So does anyone have an opinion? Um, well, honestly, like these are all like just personal things. I have, it's been extremely helpful for me to kind of uh, watch watch all of you go through the development of metrics and kind of mm -hmm. how to bring those forward. I've actually used a lot of that work with folks that I talk to in the field. Mm -hmm. So it's been helpful for me to be able to, <laughs> to do that, some of that work myself now. Um, so, I mean, that's that's been, that's good. You got, you just have a nice light behind you. <laughs> so that's been extremely helpful for me just to get that exposure so that I can bring it forward to other people. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. I remember, uh, well, Andy and Armstrong and others, well, and you got some access to the chaos task force. So this has been useful to, yep. to help others understand how this works and, and so yep. on. So in terms of purely, so the, the, the issue I still see and where we have Luis here, who is uh, our deployment manager, our deployment expert for Grimoire Lab and Liturgy Analytics is that the, the several pieces of, of software all together are a bit, well, takes time to learn yeah. and to deploy and so on. So from a community perspective, there is a high learning curve. Mm -hmm. So how can we improve this? I'm not really sure, but there are for sure certain areas where people can can help. And one of them is this definition of new panels. As we saw, it took like two, three hours of Georg's time to produce a new dashboard with mm -hmm. existing understanding the data model, creating the specific charts, and then producing a dashboard. We had some problems with the import export functionality, but we, we had a dashboard. So perhaps it, this might be a good uh, goal for 2020, like having people contributing at least to that specific level. I don't know. What do you think? I think that's great. What I mean, what are the current thoughts on this? Just in terms of improving access to Grimoire Lab, not access to it, but kind of improving um, the ability to engage with Grimoire Lab? Maybe it's the best way of saying it. Yeah, so um, so what I see is that uh, from our side, we can easily give access to any index we have. We can easily uh, let others to use a dashboard and so on. Hey, Alberto. Um, Hi, sorry for the delay. No Wait. worries. We are we are having Alberto an open discussion about the goals for 2020. So uh, we were discussing about the complexity of of how to be part of the community with several pieces of software and so on. And then that I see perhaps that the easiest path for everyone is to work at the level of the dashboard. And then we can see if there are other people interested in, in going into the into the other piece of software. So I don't know if you have any comment. <laughs> Not, not really. Well, 
I would say that probably from the point of view of the origins of, of this call, um, this was uh, focused, or we tried to focus this on building metrics on top of the data. Yep. So maybe we could try to, to follow that path of this year. We can maybe start by trying to define the metrics we are interested in, the dashboards we want to, to build, and start building them. We already started with this dashboard proposed by Georg, and I think we have at least a couple of ideas for two metrics we could try to, to solve with the new data we have, for instance, for GitHub comments and reactions. So, well, that's my... Is my Georg's video. dashboard available? Uh, sh should be in chaos. Oh, the problem is uh, the yeah. server doesn't work right now. It's down. But available in chaos dashboard. It's not yeah. available in Sigils because we missed the part of contributing the dashboard to the project. Hmm. So we are still there. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm thinking once that's contributed, I mean, this might be something to let the community know as well. Hmm. Yeah. So from, from uh, in order to bring some more people to the, uh, to the community and so on, uh, looking for ways of bringing others, just working at the level of uh, dashboards and understanding the data model and so on might be something we may try for further outreach or um, Google Summer of Code project for sure. Um, but then I don't know if I'm pointing to you, Matt, because you are the professor here, if there might be students with certain interest in these type of things, or if you are teaching certain lessons focused on this data business mm -hmm. related things. Yep, I do. Um, I guess, let me ask you a question. So when you talk about building, building kind of at that dashboard level, what would be, what's the piece of software, what's the system that I get so that I can do that dashboard work? How is that even distributed? Mm -hmm. So uh, what, uh, what the way I see it is that uh, we can produce, um, well, you know, as many dashboards as we want or data sets and so on. Yeah. So it would be like having a set of dashboards for certain projects of certain interest for you. And, and those are ready to go with the user and password. And then students or any other person interested in this could join using that user and password. And then they can start building things in the management uh, interface with certain goals predefined. Like, I don't know, we are going to study the software development cycle of the OpenStack Foundation. Yep. or the chaos community or yeah so what can you like put a it i mean do you have a, a link that you can provide to me when you're talking about giving me a username and password hmm. the students by which they can start building dashboards where what's this where does this begin for the students okay so the the storyline yeah so so the storyline here that they see is um so what 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 would I like to see in the chaos community and Grimoire Lab specifically from a community perspective is to have uh, uh, as many dashboards as possible because those will be will help will be helpful for the community to to address different point of view problems issues and so on yes. and including or even improving the current set of indexes would be useful as well. So perhaps in the same way that we are producing the structure of the community analysis with this onion analysis that is based on the on top of the Git, Git uh, and Rich Index, uh, we may produce other analysis for other communities and with other whatever, right? Um, so my point is, I would like at the, at the very end to have like a list of metrics and studies that are covering with a proper, you know, documentation and screenshot and blah, blah, blah. Like, this is the dashboard for velocity. This mm -hmm. is the dashboard for uh, maintenance. This is the dashboard for blah, blah. 
So and, and from a software engineering point of view, there are a bunch of places we can, we can deal with. So okay. from a student perspective, if this fits in your, uh, in, in, you know, in, in the kind of things you are teaching or others, might be useful to have like, well, we have a software engineering field. I remember when I, when I had my software engineering lessons at the university. So they say, well, 20% uh, of the time, between 20 and 30 is spent in development. The rest of the total, uh, let's say, price for the final product is in maintenance, right? So this is the total evolution of a product or a project. So is this true? Is this happening? How much people are evolving the product? What's the... The, the evolution of the size of the community when this becomes stable and so on. So now students may have access to real data. So they can go to any project we are interested in, Linux kernel or, or OpenStack or any other or even smaller projects, and they can go and try to understand the data and check if this is currently working from a software evolution perspective, from a software engineering perspective, so or me... perhaps from a project management perspective. I like this idea. Let me ask. I like this idea, not only for talking through things, but also mm -hmm. I kind of see the dashboards as representing use cases, which mm -hmm. is great because I think they represent something. Um, so let me ask a question. So if, if, um, if a student or, or a company or a, uh, like a broker, like a foundation created a dashboard, how easy is it to contribute that dashboard so others can use it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, if uh, the dashboard uh, relies on existing information, like yep. any of the data sources that are available in the existing dashboards, yep. then this is kind of a straightforward. Okay. So you just need to import the dashboard and then it works. Of course, okay. with a tool that works importing and exporting, that's another okay. problem. <laughs> okay. uh, but then this is kind of out of the box. And yep. if not, perhaps one of the 2020 goals we may have is to have a proper infrastructure that allows to work in this way. Mm -hmm. and so then yeah. the complexity comes when the data behind is modified in some way mm -hmm. such that it's obviously just not out of the box anymore so it's not yeah so for example you decide to uh, create a new index yep. where you are calculating the onion analysis in a different way so sure. this is your own personal index so then you have to the deliver the dashboard, dashboard and the index yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have like a set of dashboards matching an index. Okay. Alberto, Alberto, sorry, I think Alberto. I cut you off. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just uh, was going to say that probably the hardest step right now is having the data. Once you have the data and the, the standard remote lab dashboard in your machine, uh, the rest of the process is straightforward. And we already have in CDLs uh, contributing MD file the markdown with the help mm. to uh, understand all the points you need to follow to make your contribution and we are still working on that so i'd say that will be easier because mm -hmm. it's just a matter of improving the, the instructions there okay and regarding the maintenance of the the dashboard Yes, uh, it depends on the data they rely on. But even in the case you create a new index for your panel, for your dashboard, once you have the index or the, the code to generate or for generating that index in Grimola, well, it is going to be there and someone should be in charge of keeping that up to date. In the worst case, you are going to have an old code for creating the index, but the index is going to be there if you want to use that specific uh, enricher for, for the data. So even in that case, it's not a real problem. The only problem is if you rely on existing data and for some reason other people change that data. But well, if the, the dashboard is already there, probably we as a community are going to try to check all the dashboards affected by the change so mm -hmm. it will be even in that case something under control and mm -hmm. if it happens that it's not under control then 
we should have to take that into account and improve the process for, for the future. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a couple of questions here? This all makes a lot of sense. Um, is there an existing set of available dashboards at the moment? Published anywhere? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Yeah. Okay. Let me look for the link. Should be in Um What we still need to do is updating the documentation to have one document in the web page of SEALs for each available dashboard. So you can match its JSON file with the corresponding documentation. But new dashboards must uh, be uh, contributed together to the documentation for that dashboard. Okay. So we can say it shouldn't happen anymore, but for legacy dashboards, we, we need to, to work on updated documentation. So in, in a really high level perspective, what I would like to say is to have contributors, at least in the dashboard part of the, um, of the community in this case for the modelers. That would be my goal for 2020. Say that again, Daniel. Yeah, so that um, one of the goals I would like to see for 2020 for Grimoire Lab is to bring contributors to the specific, well, to, to the section of the dashboards that people can contribute. With, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if I'm looking at this list that you provided, Daniel, I see the, the panels list. Mm -hmm. And so if I click on any one of these, say, get demographics, this is a an available panel to me an available dashboard mm -hmm. to me that shows whatever's in that image there is that right oh, can you say again so this what i'm looking at if i clicked on get demographics mm -hmm. this is this is a dashboard that is available to me it is. Right? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So, and do I know if this dashboard is based on the out of the box indexes? If this is here, yeah. this, this means that this is supported by Grimoire Lab. So okay. uh, being out of the box means that you need to enable the specific uh, section to enable the analysis and then you would have this. Okay, but there's no additional enrichment of an index or modification, new code that needs to be contributed to have access to these. Yeah, what, no. we, mm -hmm. what we are missing here is the part of the documentation that yeah. explains how to do the process. I mean, you see the dashboard, you like the dashboard, yeah. and then you need to know how to get the dashboard into your Grimoire Lab installation. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the part of the documentation we are missing right now, I think. And we that was are actually going to be my next minutes. question, right? So if I look at like whatever contributors growth, I'm like, oh, I want that. How do I get that into my my instance of Grimoire Lab? Mm -hmm. we, we already had some discussion of discussions about this, but I think most of the time we focus on the company perspective. Sure, in the which makes a ton of sense. Of, yep. uh, as a final user, I would like to have, I don't know, a market of, of dashboards. So I go to the market and I select the dashboard and then the, the, the dashboard uh, with some magic appears in my installation. Yes. But for the community, we will need specific instructions like, well, you have your installations and the installation can be uh, performed following this guide here. And once you have this to upload the, pan the panel or the dashboard, you need to get this file from here and use this tool and do this and blah, blah, Click blah. this button and then it's there for yeah. you. Something yep. like that. Yeah, so I mean, that would be, um, I think, extremely helpful. Like mm -hmm. just this whole, this whole idea. So I think with um, kind of thinking through it all from the entire chain, Daniel, part of yours is how do, how do people even contribute panels? Mm -hmm. So if a student was to prepare a panel or if a 
the community member was to prepare a panel, how do we contribute to this list, particularly if that panel is just based on the out of the box mm. repair lab installation, assuming there's been no change. Um, and then subsequently, like what Alberto was talking about, and then now I see it, it's, it's available in the marketplace. How do I go about actually getting it into my instance of Grimoire Lab? Mm. Is, that, is that right? Is that? Yeah. So can I ask a couple of questions here? So um, from a Batergia perspective, how many of the panels that you produce are actually just out of the box and could any of those be shared in this marketplace? And if the answer is no, that's fine. I'm just trying to think about where what the sources of these panels could be. And again, I totally understand if they cannot. I'm just- So, so typically the, the, the basic Viteria analytics uh, deployment is contains exactly these dashboards. Okay. The only ones that are out of the box are those that are aligned with the data sources. So that means that if we have Git, uh, the area of code and demographics, we will have all of the panels related to Git, areas of code and demographics, but not yeah. the Gerrit ones, for instance. Okay. Um, and then what it happens is that the dashboards uh, are evolved either by the customer or by us mm -hmm. because they have well, different questions, requirements, so we tune right. a bit the dashboards, et cetera, okay. et cetera. But what you see in Seagulls is the first deployment that it's customers see. The, the, the generic deployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let me say that basically, um, by the time being, our market is basically asking Viterja about, I want this panel or this other one I see yeah. in the AOSCON or whatever, and we go and manually update the panel and the menu okay. and so on. So this idea of the market is something that it's there in the air, but mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, it's something we are going to do at some point or we are going to follow a different approach. And I'd say it's good that having this out of the community because probably the community uh, doesn't need this. The community needs something more basic, more oriented to probably uh, developers or technical people that have been working with Grimoire Lab from Percival to ELK and all mm -hmm. the tools because probably they need to follow the whole path to get the dashboard running. And once they are there, probably they don't matter too much about the, they don't mind too much about the the way of upload, uploading the panels because probably they know, they already know how to do it. And if they don't know, that means that our documentation needs to be improved. But well, so this is my view and probably it's not the roadmap for the community. So what if, um... I, I, I'm totally just listening, trying to listen to the two you talk. What if the one of the goals for 2020 was to actually work out this marketplace? I mean, if that, that's the goal, and that would include how to contribute dashboards, but also how to consume the dashboards in relation to the standard Grimoire Lab deployment. And so the mm -hmm. focus is on this marketplace, which of course entails contributions and consumption. Uh, yeah, I, I can imagine something doable and easy enough to be done in the context of these calls that could be having this web page we have right now just with a button. This is something that probably Manrique men mentioned in, in the past with a button like, I want this dashboard. And probably this is not going to be anything automatic in the sense you can click there and yeah. the panel is not going to be uploaded to your dashboard, but you can go to a generic page saying, okay, then what you need to do is following these four steps and the dashboard is going to be uploaded to, to your instance. Yeah. And that should be doable because we just need something like a variable that could be the, the path of the panel or the index pattern or the files you need to upload and a couple of generic instructions that could say just uh, execute this line and then this other line and expect it, this output. And of course, the prerequisites, uh, the, the requirements will be having 
uh, running remote lab installation with Kibana mm. or Kibiter or, or whatever. And that's something that could be done, I'd say, easily. The, the first version could be even without a variable, just something generic. And the next step mm -hmm. will be exploring how JQL or the the tool we are using to, to build the web page can be customized to get this from the bottom. Um, that could work and will be easy, will be, I think, enough to, to, to start with and could be a kind of market, not a real market like the Google Play or the Apple Store, but well, we are not selling at all, so we are a community. <laughs> The, the other the other way or the other approach would be to to have like a list of potential use cases of interest for people mm -hmm. mm, which is not even touching any technology even grimar lab or or any other thing it's just about listing needs and requirements so this might be another approach this is something i think i think we were discussing about having a more use case approach instead of focusing at the level of metric but We've tried use cases in the past. We have, we've kind of been down this road and they're, I don't know, something about them didn't really take very well when we were writing use cases. I don't know if it was, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's something that we were just missing on how to do it quickly and appropriately. All of them seem to take so long to write and then make available. I mean, I guess part of me, the reason I, I kind of like, like that link that you sent with the, with a bunch of the different panels there is it gives, like the use case is kind of implicit in many of those panels. Mm -hmm. If I look at like demographics, it's kind of, if I look at the narrative that you have written around demographics, there's kind of an implicit use case in there. It doesn't obviously follow us. So mm -hmm. case format, but it's kind of implied as, as to as to why you would want this panel to me. Um, and then the marketplace also, um, to me, so it, it it enables people to make contributions, take those contributions, and and use them locally. Um, and then part of it too is that there is. I'm always trying to look for a way that um, chaos can continue to support the work that you guys are doing at Batergia. Mm -hmm. Ways that we can get that work in front of people to me is extremely helpful. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, use cases, the, the idea of panels, they're just, they're so deployable in my mind. Like you could go there, you could, I know that you can't push a button, but you could in theory push a button and then you have this available to you and mm -hmm. that increases the utility of Grimoire Lab. Just in, like in four steps. And I think that's mm -hmm. a good thing for the community and I also think it's a good thing, I'll just say, for the organizations involved in the community. Um, and I think that's an important, to me that's an important thing to continue to, to foster here. In use cases, are they're a bit abstract from the technology sometimes mm -hmm. and it takes a pretty bright person to take a use case and turn it into a panel so i don't this is this is why i i like this panel idea but mm. these are just my opinions so yeah well it's true that the very last way of working with the georg and the use case coming from evolution working group yeah hey, uh, hey susan written a bunch yeah. yeah, it seemed to have worked. So it's perhaps about defining this, perhaps in the next chaos con in Brussels, yeah. we can go and have a specific time. Well, we don't have the time in the schedule, but well, we, we can see. And Over, kind of, over here. <laughs> yeah, retrieve requirements and so on from the people and say, what are your specific metrics or analysis of interest? Yeah. And then during these meetings announce, hey, we are gonna work here. So at least people can contribute uh, with at, at least with ideas and comments. That's, that's fair. And then we can have some other more advanced users as Georg, but he, he, he knows now how to produce a chart because he's been playing with that. And then from time to time, we may have other people 
that might be, you know, capable of doing this. So maybe what I hear you saying is kind of a two-step process. Is one is making sure that we talk to individuals who can just kind of speak openly about what their particular interests are yeah. um, in the panels that they would want to build. And, but then a second step of really getting those down into a panel form, mm -hmm. like a, a technical form that could be contributed to perhaps yeah. this marketplace. Okay. Because I remember after we had this discussion about the, so we had, I remember we had like a first day with discussing about the, what this means and a, okay. and a brief mock-up we produced. Then the second day we started, we were discussing a bit more about the mock-up plus produce the first widgets. And then I know we even had a third day and the third day was to finish the panel plus Kidas that we failed with yep. Kidas. Okay. But in three days we had a yep. panel. Yep. Fair enough. No, that's fair. Um, maybe, maybe we can work in this way and say for 2020, our goal is to have, I don't know, to cover 10 new use cases or, yep. or to help other working groups to bring their metrics into, into yep. panels. That over the course of how long were those, um, when you were just talking about those, the steps that you were moving through to actually produce a panel, how long were those working sessions? Day one, two, and three, do you remember? You mean how long, like in... How, how much time did you spend on kind of coming up with the use case? How much time did you spend? Oh, I, I think it was three, three, three days like this. So three, three, four hours. Okay. Because yeah. I'm wondering if maybe the, like the goal would be is over the course of one month to come up with what the use case is, <laughs> to mm -hmm. articulate what it is and then get it deployed as a panel. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps we can have some... Oh, perhaps for marketing, might be something useful. Try to uh, have uh, in the chaos uh, Twitter account or LinkedIn or whatever, uh, like guessing for use cases, asking openly, hey, we are going to work in certain use cases for the next month. So what would you like to see? Engagement, people, process, or I don't know, or, or like a list of, of use cases, open, open text from anyone. And then the, the most voted, we go for this. I like this. I'm taking note, by the way. Okay, thank you. <laughs> use, so use cases, basically, to deployment. Hmm. Um, and then perhaps... Um, call for yeah for ideas or use yeah. cases hmm. okay that's something like that i don't know if you saw my notes but yeah yeah I'm, I'm, i see right now the document and then perhaps the good point about this is that if we have like five or ten people uh asking for this and we have at least two of them participating in that month would be good that would be great. Okay. Um, could we also kind of in this, if we, if we did this, I really like this idea. If we did this, could we also talk about what Alberto was talking about earlier with respect to how we can improve the process of getting people to contribute? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, these dashboards in the marketplace and then how they can actually improve the consumption of those dashboards. Hmm. Into their, so I think that would be super helpful too. Hmm, hmm, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the notes, Matt. <laughs> oh, sure. If I can spell. And now, what do you think, Alberto? Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Almost everything makes sense to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm easy to I'm easy going. <laughs> <laughs> I think this sounds super interesting. I'd say sooner or later we are going to to need to write down the instructions to import panels. Mm. So this idea of having a button is going to be there one way or another. So okay. but if we can do it with additional mm. help, great. Yeah. yeah. I'd say probably 
once we have a first dashboard to work on, we can work on having this documentation ready with that dashboard. And later we can worry about how to include that in the rest of the mm. dashboard documentation we already have available in the web. But once we have something for one dashboard, it's going to be probably easier just updating the, the rest of the dashboards and trying to find a way that works without touching almost anything. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, this is good. I'll actually bring up the Daniel the call to the Twitter account in the community meeting so we can talk about that. Okay. There. Perfect. Yeah, I think if we use this, I mean, either here for the one or, or yep. you know, just to, to bring some attention to chaos, um, maybe another way of working. Yep. Okay, I'm going to step off for a bit because then we have that meeting at 11. I'm going to... Yeah, we can close now and, and so on. So in a couple of weeks, so I, I, I'm going to be, so on the 28th and the 4th, I'm going to